Oh, wow. So you saw the grizzly bears off the boat or while you were on the boat? Um, on the shore. We've got you zodiacs on the, on the boat. We've got five <laughs> zodiacs on the boat that we can on the shore and head up the river. What kind of sampling did you, were you taking? Yes. Yesterday, we hello. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, you were you cut out. So can you try again? Okay, I'll try again. Yesterday, Rebel Island. <laughs> you cut out. We didn't hear you. Yesterday, we were on Gribble Island, which is a little further north from here. And that's where we're seeing spirit bears and lots of humpbacks actually out, on, out and around the boat the whole time we were docked or anchored. And what were you sampling? Um, I, there's about 15 projects. So I've been sampling river water. Uh, shoreline water, looking for microplastics washed up on the shore, and then when I'm done all that, I get to look for insects, which I've been doing lots of, collecting a lot of insects, all of the places so far. Um, we got into places on Haida Gwaii that uh, we've never had a chance to collect insects before, and outside of, and we collected a bunch in Prince Rupert and Hartley Bay. We were there two days ago. Hartley Bay is a really special community we were at, and we uh, hung out with them at the school for the day and saw their trout hatchery, and then they said, okay, we're making you a big dinner. So we went into the longhouse, and the whole community is about uh, 150 people, I think, in the community, and they were all there for dinner, and they cooked us all dinner. It was incredible. So, um, when you were in... Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So, are you able to sample from the, uh, from the rack? Uh, there's not, it's a little bit cold. It is a bit later in the season. Um, but these are some beautiful places we're getting to that kind of thinking I'd like to come back and work with all these communities and people next summer. I got made a lot of friends to come back and see next June and July. Right. But uh, it's a big ship. We're usually about 60 people on board at any given time. Okay. So it includes the crew, scientists, artists, musicians, um, educators, members of the public. We have one Olympic silver medalist on the board with us. She gave us a great talk last night. And uh, it's a big cross-section of people, and us science people kind of take off and do our science once in a while. Okay. Can, uh, can you tell us a bit about the uh, plastics, uh, microplastics sampling? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's someone, I think they're from UBC, that wanted to get a sample of the soil at as many places around the coast as possible. So I think we're up to 50 or 60 different ships near enough that we can go shore, get a scoop of it, and then they'll start to go through and look for any traces of different types of plastics to start to, to gauge it. And we've seen some beaches that are totally pristine and other ones that uh, there's a lot of debris that washes up across the Pacific, as you know, Henry. Is, uh, is there any way to tell where that debris is from? Uh, I don't know. I think that'll be a real tough question. But I think to... The starting with is to see, are there beaches that don't get any plastic at all? I'm just going to give you guys one more quick look here. And then back to me. That's, that's, uh, that's what we're leaving. Okay. Well, you've got a crowd of people behind you. I don't know if you can see them. Hello. I can. 
Are you, are you guys in one of the galleries? Yep, yep. We're uh, we're we're in the Natural History Gallery. Oh, beautiful! And I can uh, tell you, the Natural History Gallery does a very good job of capturing this. A very good job, but it's not exactly the same as uh, seeing some of these uh, environments intact. Yep. So, uh, how how is it how is it different for you? Uh, the scale and the thing is in the gallery concern. Up here, we've been blessed with, we actually had three days in Haida Gwaii without rain. And they said that they didn't have three days in all of June or July without rain. So we've been very lucky with weather, but then all of a sudden it'll pour rain for a long time. We've got the gear for it. Great. So, so what, what's your, what's your typical day like? considerations and you always kind of defer to the captain if he says this is a place we can drop anchor or this is not a place we can drop anchor he always gets the first call and the last call but once we know where we're going to be then uh, we can put in our zodiacs and try to go ashore and try to do some science sampling or we'll have arrangements to meet with somebody when we met with uh, someone yesterday who gave us a tour to go up the river to be able to see the spirit bears that's something he does on a regular basis, and we prearranged that to have a day that we can meet with him, and he would take us to a safe place to be able to observe the bears. And then things like community events are all set up in advance, and we show up and give a talk, and we've got musicians on board that'll play music. So there is no typical day, but they're all long days, and we're all ready at a moment's notice to either jump in a boat or or uh, grab a net or grab a guitar and and go where we have to go. <laughs> Question for you: um, How have uh, how long have you been out? I got on October first in November. The typical leg is ten days long. I think some of them were you know nine, but they're all typically ten days long. So this is now thirteen. So it's kind of day one twenty to day thirty of the entire trip. So Isla, and that's where Henry there is going to get on in Bella Bella, and he'll do 10 days from Bella Bella to Campbell River, which those of you in BC will know it doesn't take 10 days to get from Bella Bella to Campbell River, but we do a lot of stops. Um, we spent, you know, a day and a half in Prince Rupert, and then I think uh, we're going to spend the last day and a half in Bella Bella. So it's not 10 days because you're not going full out, but there's a lot of stops in between. Did you actually see a spirit there? Uh, uh, I don't know if you heard that question. The question was, uh, did you see, did you actually see a spirit bear? Um, five. We saw five of them. I mean, it was a very special location. And we saw both the white and the black forms. Um, it was explained to us that there are black spirit bears and there are blonde spirit bears. They're not really albino, but they are blonde. And it is quite uh, spectacular when you see them because it doesn't look like any animal you could even picture. Um, but then they came walking along the river and they were just pulling out salmon and, and having their lunch. And it was quite breathtaking. Yeah, we got to see five of them yesterday. And then on our way back to the boat, there was humpbacks all around us. Oh. I wish I could be there. I'd love it. Is this sponsored by the museum? Because he said that there were the public was on there. Is it? Um, the, so, Joel, can you talk a little bit about the overall C three project? Um, which you, Carolyn was asking um, about the overall um, project, how it's sponsored, and how who's involved. Certainly, uh, I'm going to C three is uh it's got a lot of sponsors in fact we have whole walls of sponsors to sort of show who's gone into it and some of them are government agencies some of them are businesses there's been a lot of participation from first nations groups and other groups to put up the money for one thing the cost to operate a boat like this and to keep everybody on board but also to drive some of the the outcomes from it so there's been a lot of science groups like the royal bc museum is contributing you know to time and, and stuff for me to go on the on board. A lot of the science crew is being funded by the Canadian Museum of Nature and UBC and other science outlets. So there's a lot of people that are putting things in, but there's a lot of people taking things out. 
Um, so for example, you know, Google is one of the sponsors because they want us to do things with them. Facebook is a very big sponsor because we've had a lot of participation from them to post stuff. But we've also got a reporter from the Globe and Mail on board. And we've got documentary crews kind of constantly filming things because they want to get um, video footage, which a lot of it is on the Canada C3 website. If you want to see some of the videos they put together are quite incredible of some of the spots that we've stopped so far. But before all that sponsorship, there was an organization, Students on Ice, that regularly sends small groups to the Arctic and the Antarctic. And they sort of push to have one bigger one to coincide with Canada 150. So they're the organizers, and then everyone else is sort of pitched in. And what happens once the ship comes to Victoria? What happens to the ship? Uh, the ship, I've been told, is going to have to eventually make its way back to the East Coast. I think they've talked about sending it through Panama, but it's oh. not going to have a crew of, you know, active, joyful participants. I think it'll have a crew of people to maintain the boat and just get it back to the East Coast because the end of the journey is Victoria. So those of you that'll be there, they're planning quite a few events. Um, you're going to be able to get on the, the ship. It's been great. Every place we've stopped, we've uh, been able to get tours of local sea cadets or, or youth groups or some of the elders in some of the villages to come out to the boat to be able to tour it because it is a, a pretty spectacular boat and, and you don't miss it. It's a giant Canada flag painted boat. Right. When will it be in Victoria? October 28th is when it arrives and there's going to be events on the 28th and, and possibly on the 29th as well. Right. So, so did you know... Lands. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Two oh, more there's lakes. two more lakes. There's right. this one. There's good. I finish in Bella Bella. Then it's going to be Bella Bella to Campbell River, and then Campbell River to Victoria on the 28th. Okay. Did you know anyone that was on the boat prior to getting on? Uh, no. Actually, it was funny. That's one of the amazing things with it. There's 60 people on board, and there's crew. I mean, they're the hardworking guys that are keeping the ship running. There's cooks. Um, and then there's the participants and then there's the staff. I didn't personally know any of them, but uh, it's a small boat for 10 days. You make friends quickly um, right. and you help out where you can. It's, you, you don't get to get out of doing the dishes. You, you do what you have to to make sure everybody moves along well and uh, you quickly make friends. Did you, and there's you certainly had... gonna... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, and, and there's certainly a lot of people working with later um, that I met on the boat that I, I have big plans to, to continue to see. Some of them in Victoria I didn't know before, and I'm going to hopefully keep in touch with them. And then uh, other folks from across the country that I'll keep in touch with as well. Right. So what's going to happen with the information like about the microphones? So um, the question is, what's going to happen with all that information, all that data that's collected? whether it's about the microplastics uh, or other things, how, how's that data going to be synthesized? Well, it's funny that I say 15 projects, and, and I mean, we've got our big binder of the 15 projects that we're constantly recording data for, but in actuality, it's more like 30 or 40, you know, projects worth of information, and I'm really looking forward to, at the end, being able to ship data to people and say, this is what I gathered, but I think there's going to be a lot of papers maybe some larger studies and some conclusions. Um, and it's especially great to work with some of these communities because they have concerns. I mean, we were in Hartley Bay and they're very concerned about, uh, it was right off of where the Queen of the North sank 11 years ago. They're very concerned about not necessarily ferry traffic, but about any possible spills. So they want to know what the environment is here, uh, what the baseline conditions of things are, uh, we've got an oceanographer here who's just studying where does water flow out of any of these inlets. And, and all of these things are going to give us really good sight of the BC coast, in addition to all the rest of the legs that are around the rest of the coast of Canada. Have you found any um, anything within your sampling that has surprised you? The insect stuff is very surprising to me because, as I said, we didn't have any records of insects from the south end of, of Haida Gwaii in the Guayanas region. We didn't have any. We had good questions about things that eat salmon when they come in on the salmon run. 
And uh, so I've been actually been able to collect things for that, uh -huh. which have been incredible. And any of the records that I have are going to definitely be new ones for this part of the country. Even though it's October and it's not supposed to be the time to collect, there's definitely things we collected that are very interesting. Why is October not just, the time to collect? There's days that it's kind of chilly. We've been blessed with a lot of sun, but uh, I'm thinking like, you know what? There's a lot of friends here, and I'm I'm uh, already booking a place to come back here next June, I think, and July would be a great time to come here as well. Right. And then that would be interesting data to see what's there in October yeah. and what's there in June. Well, and that's, I mean, a lot of you know, this is the first time, but as, as most people know, like the best environmental monitoring is you have to do it over time, over and over again, to start to see how things are changing. And the good thing is these are communities that care about it. They want to know these things. And I think the best thing will be work with them in the future to do monitoring. And, and of course, I'm going to have to come up and help them just because it's so beautiful up here. I'm going to have to come up and, and help them all the time. <laughs> work yeah. <with> them. <laughs> and, and bring your, um, your colleagues too, right? Especially yes, from learning. Yes, I think you are BCM people are going to have to come. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank you. And good luck on your portion. Great. One more view of the water before you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. It almost looks like it's not real. It's, uh, it's a like little weird. It's the backdrop. Yeah, it's a bit of a screensaver every morning, and then, then you see a whale, and you're like, oh, it is real. Right, right. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Joel. Thank you. So, uh, uh, just, I got one more question, Joel, before you go. Yep. How are the, how are the lab facilities? Uh, how are we doing for microscopes on board? Uh, there's a really good compound scope. I did find a dissecting scope, but honestly, I haven't had a chance to pull it out. But the lab okay. facility is very nice. It's very clean because they're mostly doing DNA stuff. So it's a very clean setup lab, and it's usually okay. the science nerds that retreat to it and prepare things. Okay, uh, and uh, there's a there's a dissecting scope on board, at least one. Yes. You want to pull that out? I haven't had time to, but it's there. Okay. <laughs> Hard to do it when the boat's all going back and forth, or day. one rough day when we came back from Haida Gwaii that was. Pretty rough because we went on the outside western coast of Haida Gwaii and that got kind of rough. But every other day has been like glass calm all the way down the coast. Oh, really? Very Lucky. nice. <laughs> very, very, very all right. Well, thanks so much, Joel. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See, you. See you back there soon. Thanks, Felicity. Take care, Joel. All right. Bye. <laughs>